Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm back working on our little steam locomotive stoker engine that we're working with the Nashville Steam Group up in Nashville, Tennessee, who's in the process of restoring a big mainline steam locomotive. I've talked about this several times in the past, but the part that we're working on is a little uh, steam engine that fits up in the tender of the locomotive that actually powers the stoker. The stoker is basically an auger that moves the coal from the tender of the locomotive up into the boiler, so basically it's to feed the coal into the boiler, replacing the guy with the shovel on these bigger locomotives that required so much coal. Uh, if you're interested in more, uh, knowing more about the engine, you can go back and watch some of the previous videos in this series. Uh, but right now, what we're going to be working on is making a part for that locomotive. So I've had a lot of questions uh, about the Stoker engine project where we're at right now. So just kind of fill you in. Um, since we last worked on it, where we did the spray welding uh, in the bottom of the, the big case. Uh, got that part done. Right now, the whole uh, case is actually with Adam Booth, a uh, fellow YouTuber, and he's gonna be remachining uh, the bottom slides. This is where the cross heads slide back and forth. He's gonna be remachining those on his shaper coming up here very soon. He's in the process right now of getting some things ready so he can do that. He's gotta build a fixture plate to mount it on and a couple other things, but uh, hopefully he's gonna be able able to get to that project soon and I will get that back in the shop. The other big thing that I'm kind of on hold right now is the crankshaft itself. It had some severe pitting uh, on a several of the journals on the crankshaft. I actually took this over to a, a shop uh, not too terribly far from me here where I live in South Georgia uh, that specializes in doing crankshaft work and they are going to basically rebuild up those areas. They got a process where they re-weld onto the steel crankshaft and then grind it back down. And that's what this particular shop does. They specialize in crankshafts. That's all they do. And uh, they are experts in that field. And it is something that was really beyond the means of what I had the right equipment in my shop to do. So we, uh, we farmed that particular job out. I'm kind of on hold until I get those parts back in the shop as far as really putting it back together. But in the meantime, I am going to be working on making some individual pieces and parts for the Stoker engine. And uh, that's what today's project is going to be, making some uh, valve stems uh, to go in there. So let me just zoom you over here, kind of show you what we're going to be working on. And then we're going to get busy making the part over on the lathe. So I've kind of got laid out here the pieces and parts that have to do with the valve. Uh, this right here is basically the valve rod. This connects up on the eccentric on the uh, crankshaft. So that's going to be kind of a cam type operation that moves this thing in and out in a very, fairly short stroke. It goes down to this uh, little transfer block. We're going to be remaking this. This is made out of steel. And then from that, we have the actual valve rod here. And this is a part that we're going to be working on today. These valve rods uh, then go up to the valve. You see the valve assembly here. Uh, you basically got two piston type rings on here. This slides back and forth about that far inside of a, uh, uh, a machined out cylinder uh, in the head of the, of the, of the engine. And uh, we're going to be working on the uh, actual, we'll have to remake these rings later on as well as make new sleeves to go up in there. But that's uh, later on. This here is the part we're going to be making. Uh, of course, I had to cut these parts to get the machine or get the engine taken apart, uh, but no big deal. Fairly simple part to make. I'm fortunate in that uh, I was able to get uh, all the specifications and even uh, mechanical drawings uh, of the parts that we need to make, and uh, that's going to make this job a little bit easier. Here's the original blueprint for the uh, valve stems, and uh, this is what we're going to be going off of. It's a fairly simple part, 5 8 inch cold roll steel is what it's made out of. Need two of these pieces. It's basically threaded on both ends and turned down to a half inch. Uh, we're going to use the dimensions here for an outside packed engine, so the total length is 17 and 1 16th inch long. This uh, machine down area is 6 inches, and of course we just have threads on either end. Now to make this from, uh, I've just got some cold Old roll steel here. I've already got those cut to length. You can kind of see here where it's been turned down to half inch and machined on that end. And uh, to do this job, we're, we're going to be doing it over on our Revet metal lathe. So let's get it set up over there and we'll get these parts knocked out. 
over on my revet lathe here. Uh, I figured we just do this over on my small lathe. And I decided to go ahead and just put a collet chuck in here. That's five eighths inch collet chuck that we'll be using to work with. I'm gonna start by facing this side. Uh, this is the side we're gonna turn down to half inch. So I'm gonna put a center in there just to give me some extra support. We'll just come in here and uh, Face this end off. Looks like my cutter's a little bit low. Let me raise that up just a tad. All right, let's see how that does. Still just a little bit low. Looks good. Got a center drill. We're just going to put a center in here. I need to pull this out so I got six inches here. And uh, we're going to. Leave a little extra sitting in there. Tighten my collet chuck back up and we'll run a center here to support the end. Just gonna put a mark on here at six inches where I know how far to turn down to. That's good right there. Now we just need to turn this down to half inch. I'm having some trouble. This uh, collet chuck is wanting to slip in here. It's not giving me any support down here. So I think I'm gonna change this out and put my three jaw chuck back in there. I'm just not happy with how that's running. Not sure what's going on, but I just can't get that thing tight enough. All right, I think we got a better setup here now. Got a chuck in here. Gonna take a light pass. Make sure things don't cut good. Got it supported down there on the uh, tail stock end, and that seems to be cutting real nice. See where we are on our diameter here. Looks like I got about uh, 70 thousandths to come off of it. Should have 30 thou to go. That's exactly what we've got. I'll do a Another 20 thousandths cut pass here and then clean up with a 10. Just confirm my measurement here. Looks like it's needing about nine thou here. Tell you what, we're gonna make that eight thou. I'll dial in eight and we'll cut it on out. And after turning beautifully, that pass wants to give me a little bit of a ugly finish in there, but we can live with it. And that's reading right on half inch. That's good. 
getting ready to thread here and um, just a couple of things. I've had some questions lately about threading. and I know I've covered this in a lot of videos in the past. We've always got new viewers coming in. So just a couple of basics on setting up for cutting threads on the lathe here. So we're cutting 60 degree threads. Uh, that's the, the included angle of the profile here. So I've got my compound here set at half of that. So half of that is 30 degrees. So that basically when you look at that thread form in here, we're basically moving in on the same angle as the back back here. If you read in the books, it usually says actually set at 29 and a half degrees, just a half a degree under 30 degrees. That's exactly what I've got it set on. Uh, honestly, guys, I don't think it really matters that half degree that much, but I typically do it by the book. Now, the other uh, thing here when we're threading is I got my, my cross slide set to zero. Uh, I don't guess you can see that. Let me zoom out a little bit more. Okay, so I got my cross slide set to zero here. And I'm always, when I get to the end of my cut, I'm going to come out. And then when I come back to the end, I'll bring my dial back to zero. And I'm going to feed in on the compound. This is where I'll make my feed. And when you do it that way, again, you've got this little triangular cutter in here and it is actually moving along parallel to that back side, that back V back here. You're making all of your cut in the bottom. Now, some people will just go straight in. And again, I'm not going to tell you that's wrong, but according to the book, it is wrong. Does it work? Yeah, it works fine. But uh, if you come in at that angle, you're actually making all of your cut on this back face back here rather than in the very bottom. You're cutting it on that sol on that front face that you're cutting. That's how I do it. Now, the other big question I get all the time is how do you know when to engage the lathe? Well, there's a real easy way of doing it. There's a, there's a uh, feed rod down here that when you turn the lathe on, it's turning, it's synchronized with the chuck so it knows where it is in relation to where the chuck is at. You've got this little clock over here. This is your threading dial. There's numbers on here. And uh, what you want to do is you want to engage your, your feed. Um, you want to engage your feed when a number comes to the top. So I'm just kind of going off of the very top. Now, on most lathes, for cutting even number of threads, you can engage on any number that comes up if you're cutting on odd number threads. Uh, like we're going to be cutting a 13 pitch, I would want to either engage on even numbers or odd numbers, but never on all the numbers. If you're cutting even threads, it doesn't matter. So uh, we'll probably go with odd numbers. I'm cutting an odd number of threads, 13. So I'm going to pick an odd number. So that's going to be one, three, and five in this case. This has uh, got three different options as it goes around. So I'll wait for like number three to come up. And when it comes up, I engage my cross slide. When it gets to the end of the cut, I disengage it and you see it starts going around again. So uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a scratch pass to make sure I'm cutting 13 threads per inch. And uh, then we'll get ready to start cutting our threads. So let me just uh, feed this in until it just barely scratches. I'm gonna take a little bit more. I'll wait for an odd number to come up. We engage, we come out to our line. I'm gonna pull out there and we'll stop the lathe. And we're gonna check this with a thread pitch gauge to make sure that we are indeed cutting 13, in 13 threads per inch and they're lining up fine. So we got the right thread pitch. Some people say, why do you do that? So guys, there's a lot of settings over here. It's really easy to get on the wrong one and it just takes a second to verify that you're on the right thread pitch. So uh, I always do that. I'm gonna take this back to zero. We're gonna feed in some more here. Put a little cutting oil on here and we'll start cutting threads. So we're ready for our next pass. I'll wait for number three to come around. We engage, we're cutting threads. I get to the end there, I'm gonna pull that out. Go back to zero on my dial, feed in a little bit deeper and uh, we'll wait for number three to come back up again.
Let's just rinse and repeat. We'll just keep cutting these until we get them down to the right size. As I get down closer to in, or deeper in there, I tend to make a little bit lighter pass, lighter cut on each pass. Um, it just makes things go easier. I am pulling my cutter out there at the end. You can let it just cut all the way around, but uh, I kind of like to make, make them come out at the end. And uh, typically you can tell when you're done, when you get a nice sharp point at the top of the thread. We're getting real close. I think it needs to go a little bit more, but I'm going to stop right here. We're going to actually do a test fit. So I'm just going to move everything out of the way here. I've just got a half inch nut that we're doing a test fit with. And that's actually a nice fit right there. So we're going to stop right there. Um, that's perfect actually. But uh, if you look, as you start to get up, you don't want to be a really sharp, sharp top, but once those come together, that's kind of an indication that you're getting close. Sometimes I'll put an indicator on here and look at my depth of cut. You can look up and see um, how deep that needs to be and you can actually dial it in, but uh, I usually go for a test fit. All right, uh, looks like that thread is cut. We're gonna flip it around, cut the thread on the other side and uh, this one will be done. And I got it flipped around. I'm going to start out by facing this back side. chamfer uh, the leading edge. Got a mark on here, inch and three quarters is uh, how deep my threads need to be. This is 5 8 11 on this side, so let me get set up here. Gonna do a scratch pass. Got my pitch gauge here set to, well, that's still on 13. Let's change that to 11. All right, so that's 11 threads per inch. And we are cutting right on the money. So let's go ahead and start cutting some threads. Getting real close here. Let me uh, check that with a nut. It's a 5 8 11 nut here, and it's still a little tight. It was wanting to start, but not quite. 
Take another little light pass here. Well, I think we got the first one made here. So this is the, uh, again, the valve rod that uh, this is on the eccentric. Uh, we're gonna be remaking this block down here. This cast part will just be cleaned up and we'll reuse that, but this is made out of steel. We'll redo that. The uh, valve rod has a, uh, just a lock nut that goes on here. This uh, screws up inside of this area here and you can find, adjust the, the length of the stroke by moving this in and out. And of course you just jam that up once you get it in there. Uh, on this end is where the actual valve goes. There's a end piece, that's the, the ring. Got a spacer in here. And then we got another ring and end piece on that end. And of course the nut holds all this in. I've still got to um, drill this in down here for a cotter pin to go in and it takes a narrower nut than what I got on here. I just stick that one on there. But you can kind of see there, there's your valve. And uh, when this thing's running, it's just sliding back and forth inside a sleeve that's ported on either side. And this uh, basically adjusts the, the steam is either going to a power stroke or an exhaust. It's supporting either steam coming in or steam coming out, depending on the position of the valve as it moves back and forth. But uh, there you go, one new valve stem done. Uh, I've got another one to make. I'll do that one off camera, but thought you guys might enjoy seeing that. Well, there you go, guys. That's gonna be a wrap on this video. Uh, a new shiny part for the steam engine restoration. Uh, glad to have this knocked out. I'm gonna do another one off camera, like I said, and we'll have this, the valve stems done and many more parts to make uh, before this uh, steam engine is ready to go back together. And we're just gonna do them one piece at a time. That'll be it, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Comments are appreciated. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thumbs ups are appreciated. And guys, we will catch you on the next video.